Good afternoon, and thank you very much, Judith, for accepting our invitation to view together. My first, my first question for you is um, that Pillar 5 of the International Year of Artisanal Fisheries and Aquaculture Global Action Plan is about gender equality and equity related to artisanal small-scale fisheries and aquaculture. What do you think are the main challenges facing women in the sector? So for me, the, what I would like to underline is a challenge is related to the whole issue regarding access by women in small scale fisheries and aquaculture. And access is in all the areas, including access to fish as a resource itself, because uh, this is the heart of everything, of the work that they are doing. And without fish, they are not able to um, access the market because they will not have any goods. So access to fish is really a, a challenge to them. And other challenges related to this include uh, poor or unhealthy working conditions that the women uh, are, are facing, but also access to finance, limited access to um, information, uh, access to market and market information, but also access to business skills, which is really critical for them to be able to compete in the, in the landscape around fish and other um, goods or food that are being produced. My second question to you is, why can investing in capacity development for women in the small scale fisheries and aquaculture sectors have a big impact on the livelihoods and increase food security and nutrition for local, local communities? Capacity development activities are critical. And for me, if particularly they focus in building the organizations for women in, in, in small scale fisheries, I am the believer of collective action for women because if they work in these collaborative situations, they have a huge potential to addressing the challenges that I've just mentioned. The challenges that women in small scale fisheries and aquaculture face. And therefore capacity development um, in all areas, for example, in areas such as technology, areas of credit services, uh, entrepreneurship opportunities, access to market, access to like uh, um, information in all spheres, you know, skills and all the related knowledge is very, very important and vital in ensuring that women and their organizations, you know, play that important role of urgency to participate in decision and, uh, and policy making processes. If these um, women are supported to build or to, to operate in these collaborative situations through their organizations, they will be enabled to effectively participate in all forms of um, you know, decision-making, as I said, um, policy-making processes, which are very, very important because if they are not there, meaning that even their views, their thoughts, their ideas, the issues that they would wish to, uh, to send across to be incorporated in the policies, they will not be there. So these all things affect their lives and their livelihoods. And that's why it is really, really important. Uh, you've mentioned um, some factors that go into and help create the gender gap. And so my next question is about, um, about this. And what are some actions that organizations can take to incentivize governments to pr promote women's empowerment and policies that tackle the gender gap? Women in fisheries play a significant role. They have a really uh, important and crucial role in feeding our society, in educating the children in our communities, in ensuring that the families are healthy and so on and so forth. And therefore, this is really important that uh, we are empowering ourselves. When we need to advocate for um, collaboration between 
non-state actors and state actors in addressing these issues, in bridging this gender gap, in working with the women-led organizations. Why am I saying this? Um, if we don't work together, it means we won't have really efficiency in trying to bridge this gap but also having a clarity, clear understanding of what these issues are, unless we invite and embrace these women uh, organizations working together with the government who are at the end of the day, the planners, the, those who are you know, managing the budgets and uh, implementation plans at the national level or at the country level, I would say. And um, therefore, if I may give an example, um, recently, um, Tanzania, uh, through the Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries, we launched a national steering committee for implementation of the International Year uh, of Artisanal Fisheries and Aquaculture 2022. And this is an important step because you realize at the international level, we have an international steering committee. And we, were, we are wanting to see International Year celebrated, you know, worldwide, everywhere. So at this local level, at the national level, we need also some kind of coordination. And the good thing is the ministry uh, who is leading this process has, you know, opened their hands and has embraced collaboration with other non-state actors. And if I may give you another example, EMEDO, the Environmental Management and Economic Development Organization, the organization that I'm heading, we are working or in support with the support from FAO HQ uh, headquarters and uh, in collaboration also with the ministry responsible for fisheries in, in my country. We are supporting this national Association of Women in, in Small Scale Fisheries in Tanzania to strengthen its base. So with this project supported by FAO, we are bringing together, mobilizing these women, informing about uh, the national network, which is TAUFA, Tanzania Women Fish Workers Association, TAUFA, that there is this opportunity. How do you feel coming together in this collective action so that the issues, the challenges that you are facing at this level could be amplified, could be brought into light so that at the end of the day, we are able together in our collective way to address, to support you so that you are able to address these challenges. For the next question, I'd like to ask you, how can the International Year of Artisanal Fisheries and Aquaculture YAFA 2022 and its supporters accelerate the process of achieving gender equality and equity. Yeah, thank you so much. You know, YAFA 2022 for me is really, really an opportunity. And uh, it is an opportunity because it's giving attention globally to the women in small scale fisheries and aquaculture. Attention that was not there Yafa is creating an opportunity. I would also like to give an example um, from our own organization, uh, Environmental Management and Economic Development Organization, EMEDO. We are based in the Lake Victoria Basin. Our offices are just situated near a landing site, a very small landing site. But what are we doing with this small, uh, small landing site? Um, that has the capacity to, to to, to, to uh, accommodate just 20 landing, I mean, boats at, at one time, but still mainly it supports women. And what do we do there? We use EAF as an opportunity to create, you know, some kind of a dynam dy dynamism with that community. In our office premises, we have an environmental resource center. This environmental resource center is also providing an opportunity for members of this community to come together and dialogue. 
And again, we are using IAFA as an opportunity. Like, okay, this year is an international year of artisan officials and aquaculture. Please come and let's discuss together. What can we do together as a community to support these women who are engaging in, in small scale fisheries? But not just the women, but the BMUs here. How is the BMU functioning? What is giving us that push, the energy for this year is the international year. So we are using international year, it's like an excuse, but it's the opportunity, opportunity to bring the people together. That's why we are really, really keen to ensuring that we are using IAFA as an opportunity to continue raising awareness on the role played by small scale fisheries. And we are using our uh, our tool, which is the, <laughs> the voluntary guidelines for securing sustainable small scale fisheries in the context of food security and poverty alleviation. And the good thing is, with the support of FAO, we've been able to, uh, uh, and, uh, and the ministry, we've been able to translate this into Kiswahili. And therefore, every community member can read through and benefit from all this. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. So you, for our last question, you mentioned just now that you're going to be launching the national initiative right around the time of International Women's Day. So thinking about this, as you know, the theme for International Women's Day this year is breaking the bias. I wondered what bias do you feel is the most important one to break for women working in small scale fisheries and aquaculture? And what impact do you think breaking this bias would have on improving uh, the situation? Exactly, breaking the bias again goes back to what I've said before when it comes to the challenges. Breaking the bias. Look at the significant role that is played by the women, especially on the post harvest section, really big. For me, normally I look at this single woman who's capital is only able to manage buying one bucket of fish per day. And when, what she gets out of this, she would extract the money for feeding their family, taking them to school, meeting health you know, needs and everything else, food and everything. And then that capital remains, it's circled back, you know, get it back to, to, to buying fish the following day so that they are able to continue with the business. And therefore breaking the barrier, meaning it, it means that we need to really address these challenges that women in small scale fisheries face. We need to address the challenges of access. And this access for me, I, 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 I say it in capital letters, and I bold and I underline because it's access to all these other issues, access to fish as a resource, access to market, access to technology, access to information, access, access, access is my number one thing. And once this is done, it's going to have a significant impact. So this is what I really feel that breaking the barrier has to be in line with breaking all the challenges uh, or the barriers to access uh, regarding uh, access to all the productive resources uh, in the small scale fisheries, especially concerning women. Wonderful, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Jennifer. <laughs>